off. Turn it off. Turn Do you off. have any idea how hot it's going to get in here get if you turn, turn that off? Go go put go put on Skinny the dress. Lives matter. <laughs> you be quiet. It'd be cold as shit. Thank you. Correct. It's Thank you. Let's vote. It's 66 because you turned Let's it off. Vote. It went up a degree immediately. <laughs> good. Because I'm so goddamn good looking that I touch it in the... Go turn my air back on or you're never coming back on the podcast. Yeah, oh 72. My God. Just bring it up. Just hit the button up. Just turn it up to 68. So you raise the temperature 72. And just turn it 72. off. Yeah, because it then it's going to stay at 68. Trust me, if we turn that off... H- Harry? Harry? You sit down. I will call the police. <laughs> you turned it to 69 because you're immature. No, just slightly warmer. <laughs> oh, Very man, it's freezing in here. <sighs> Where's some, like, Lacey, who, like, had, like, the single AC unit in the bed, and a, you know, like, this AC unit's meant for, like, uh, probably, like, a, a two-bedroom apartment it's sitting in a one bed. Eight by ten room, and she just had it on. She's sitting in the bedroom, like it's so hot, it's freezing in there. The doorknob's got like ice on it. I honestly don't care. This is my apartment. I like it cold. <laughs> so why aren't you moving to New Hampshire if you like it cold? Because I don't like libertarians. <laughs> 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 Are you watching yourself? My apartment. I like it cold. <laughs> so why aren't you moving to New Hampshire if you like it cold? Is that the Aces Info? Uh huh. No, this is the. See, you just the, the air turned off. The G four. I want to see some because some there's an Aces Zen phone with a laser on it. Looks just like that in the back. Does I just want to see the, the laser. Phone? The Bluetooth phone. No. Does anyone have that? No. Because we have. It crashes. We touch booms. That's why. I want it to be so awesome. Is it just shit. the operating system, or do they, yeah. make, they make the phone it, port? All right, um, all right. It's just the operating system. All right, nerds. The, phone, like the, the base, like the hardware, is just kind of hard to do with it. Nerds. But, and, and, and the operating system keeps not. fucking up. I know. Nerds. What are you downloading? What? No, don't download that, that app. Did you get cell four one on that damn thing? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Sorry. Is that, is that, are we live yet? We're live streaming, yeah. Here we go. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris Spangle. We bring uh, all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. We explain to you what the hell is going on in the world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. This is a podcast brought to you by the We Are Libertarians Network. We have many other shows. Just go to iTunes and search We Are Libertarians. This, uh, Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes. That's how we grow up in the charts. Uh, like us on... Now, listen, only rate and review us if you're going to give us five stars. Uh, should like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us financially through PayPal or Patreon at WeAreLibertarians.com. Uh, we are supported by listeners like you, so $1 an episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow, and we're going to reward you for that very soon. And we are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at WeAreLibertarians.com. Uh, Greg joins us. Greg, how are you doing? Good, but how are you? Uh, we've got uh, Creighton Harrington. <laughs> hey, Hi. And then we've got uh, Harry What's up? being peculiar as hell over there. What are you doing? I don't like the camera on me. I'm trying to type in my password, <laughs> and then the camera's like looking at my screen you don't and like, possibly my keyboard. It just makes me paranoid. You don't like to be hacked, do you? No. No, I do not like to be hacked. I, I, I swear people like play with me. Like I, I don't know if there are actually people like doing it in malice, but all my network is get probed by like very weird IP addresses. Some from inside the United States, some outside. Some... Do, you have, like, do you have like Wireshark running 24-7 or something? You don't? No. I don't. <laughs> what is Wireshark? Wireshark is a packet sniffing tool. It uses to sniff packets on your network. It's a, it's a network watcher. <laughs> that was my nickname in college, packet yeah. sniffer. It's a... Uh... <laughs> You, 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 like a sugar packet it's, a pro, it's a program that you run, and it just catches all of the various information going to and from your router. Basically. Yeah, or ah. like, it was, yeah, what's happening on this? So, like, if you're using like a VPN, you really want to see if your VPN is actually working and to see if it's not leaking out information networks. Virtual run, private network for the non-nerds listening, all two of you. Yeah, you run. You can run Wireshark to see if you're leaking out things out in like plain text as well. Well, you don't you want to use it if you're incredibly paranoid and you think people are watching you be on the computer all the time. Harry. You're only paranoid if you're wrong. <laughs> but according to my intrusion protection systems, things do try start. Po- I get poked. Oh, I'm being poked. Oh, I get poked too by freaking Spangle. Listen, we had a listen. I blame I blame Greg and Aaron. No, I didn't Aaron. get poked by either of them. Aaron, so Aaron did. Aaron start poking you, Greg. Out of nowhere, he 
and you know, invoked his white male entitlement and poked the shit out of me. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, what what year is it? Oh, well, once they st- once they <laughs> both poked, I saw Greg make a post about Aaron poking. So he was I making po- poking great again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I poked Greg, and then Greg poked me, so then I poked you, and then I just started poking everybody that was in my little poke suggestion. Equal opportunity poker. Think we're talking about po- poking on Facebook. I was poking girls that I was, I'm was i into. I'm poking guys that I, I, don't, I don't even like. I'm poking everybody. <laughs> I'm poking all kinds of ladies and poking, poke all, poking all kinds. Well, let's not be aggressive about it. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe an unwanted poke every now and then. But... Harry, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was in a poke war with this one woman on Facebook. I think we got over to 200. I finally just gave up. And- no, I win. And I'll tell you why. And I'm so mad about it. And it's Aaron's fault. Aaron ruined it. So I've been in a poke war with my friend Selena mm-hmm. for years. Mm-hmm. We got up to 2,337 pokes. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow! And, and because I had so many pokes, I mm-hmm. just got tired of it, so I started xing all the pokes, and I accidentally xed Selena, and it ended the poke war, and I lost. I'm at, and Aaron, it's Aaron's fault. Yeah. So, hey, hey Ron. Ewert. Yeah. I'm coming after you. If something can be ruined, you can blame it on an Ewert. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We just got a uh, breaking news. We just got a Snapchat from Aaron. He's from Martinsville, which uh, they just got Snapchat. Yeah, so um, our, um, it's the Arkansas of Indiana. <laughs> so it's uh, it's it, over for West Virginia of Indiana. If you're if you're so inclined to that side of the the nation, it's our little Confederate getaway. He put mm-hmm. a generator. He has no air conditioning because he buys trucks for two hundred and fifty dollars. The uh, smart way, right? And then and then drives them around and wrecks them. And then uh, he can't figure out why he has no air conditioning. Well, it's because your truck wasn't uh, uh, air conditioning in trucks wasn't invented when you bought when this truck was made. <laughs> so he put a generator in the back truck, in the back of the truck, and then he put a window unit in the back <laughs> window, which I don't know is if it's genius, genius or redneck as hell. Both, both. Yeah. 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 I have AC in my legacy, but yeah, it yeah he adapted and overcome, you know, just yeah. like Todd Young, who oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Marine. Now, see, you two idiots. I'm uh, not talking to Greg. Uh, I'm talking to Harry and Creighton. It's already 67. I keep my I like to keep my thermostat at a toasty 65 degrees. I'm like Letterman. I like to be on all the time. And I keep it at 65, and uh, Creighton, oh, it got cold, I got goosebumps. And then he turned it off, and it immediately went up a degree. <laughs> Said nothing about goosebumps. And, and it's now 67 degrees. It's going to be 69 it any actually, moment. It actually feels much better. It feels yeah, it does. It's only two degrees warmer. It's, it it's feels, comfortable in here. It, it, Creighton turned it to, we agreed on 68, and then That's ha- what I turned it to. Harry mm-hmm. had to turn it to 69 because he's immature. First, it's freaking cold. It's freaking cold. I was going to put it on seventy two, but you would like leave oh, me alone. I would have kicked you out of my fucking house. <laughs> that, thermo- that thermostat hasn't been over seventy degrees ever. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're going to need a new AC unit here soon. I know. When when the I apartment complex. Will be. <laughs> I know. Right? Yeah, that's why I rent. Or he's going to have fans everywhere, and we're not going to be able to podcast because of the noise. <laughs> I can just see, see the maintenance man. So I was like. You know, I mean, this is all right. We gotta fix this, but you gotta, you gotta give this thing a break. <laughs> <laughs> that's never been turned off. <laughs> that has been told to me before. Actually, I call, I call them like this thing's not working, and they're like, it's because it's a block of ice. Yeah. You, you have to turn it off. It's 60, 60 degrees outside, and you've got it set at sixty five. The air conditioning needs hot work and i said that's not my problem i rent sir <laughs> get me an air conditioner that works and be quick about and be it quick about it or i will call my friend maya and she will fix it for me so and then they did nothing because it's apartment maintenance so. but you've got to turn off like, literally a block of ice probably was forming outside like literally no 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 it was a block of ice i, I bet it was yeah and it was a block of ice in there it's a block of ice in here right now it's like, not cold at like all. um it's i had my growler out for the last two hours and it's still freaking cold greg just it's certainly not baton rouge okay oh, oh, right. oh wow God. nice segue. Yeah. it's nice. a little more that minnesota was nice segue. it was mm-hmm. i mean it's brutal based on the content of what we're going to talk about it's not good but like no oh. 
But it's making light of a serious situation. I mean, nice. That was good. Yeah. Swamp goes, heat is and, never a light situation. No, I live in DC, all right. So you want to talk about swamp heat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> swamp. I, li- I lived in the Legion of Doom swamp. Oh mm-hmm. gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah, t- 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 today we're going to talk about a pretty serious subject. You know, I hadn't followed it, and then I saw the, this name popping up, uh, Anton Sterling. Alton. Uh, Alton. Alton Sterling popping up, and I I just hadn't paid attention to the story, and I really haven't looked into that story, because I got to the Minnesota shooting first, uh, where a man was killed by the police for having a broken taillight. And I well, wa- that is actually why he was killed. No, he was killed because... Uh, so. Uh, so let's let's set that story up first, and then we'll talk about the Sterling case because uh-huh. this came first. But you know we're going to talk about uh, police killings. Five hundred and fifty, I think it's five hundred and five people have been killed by police in this calendar year. We are now at July seventh today, mm-hmm. so you know we have a, a thousand people probably killed by police officers in Louisiana, where the Baton Rouge uh, shooting took place. Thirty eight people have been mm-hmm. killed by police officers in 2016. Um, so, and, and the vast majority of them are black. Uh, so we, we have, uh, you know, if you listen to episode 160, where we interviewed uh, two, two gentlemen who had been in prison for two decades each, um, you, you heard about, it, it's not just a racial problem, it's a lower class problem. If you're poor in this country, you don't get off scot free like Hillary Clinton. You get rushed through a system that has zero compassion or mm-hmm. dignity for your humanity, uh, and mm-hmm. it's because of the perverse... justice system for plebeians, right? Yeah. And so we have a system of complete injustice. And you watch these two videos, and I'll tell you what: we're now we're now in an era where you know this Baton Rouge killing uh, of Sterling was caught by a group. That goes around, and their purpose is to not catch police killings. Their purpose is to catch murders. And so the the large majority of murders crime in general. are, are yeah. black-on-black crime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what, the, what they do is they listen to police scanners, and this network of, of local activists go out, and they film people getting killed. Yeah, they're trying to scare young people from joining gangs. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so th- they make documentaries about how murder happens and how not, not to let it happen to you and don't go down this path because this could happen to you. And they're called Stop the Killing, right? Right. Yeah. Arthur Reed's there. Yes, later. Arthur mm-hmm. Reed. And uh, there was an interview with him yesterday, uh, July 6th, on Democracy Now! That was interesting to, to hear why he does what he does. Um, but... They caught, they caught, that's one of the two videos, there's one video of the Baton Rouge killing that is still being suppressed because the police officers walked over, took the phone without warrant, downloaded the contents, and took the video of, of the phone. They didn't, they didn't have a warrant to take the phone to the person videoing the crime. They just took it. And uh, now uh, civil libertarians essentially are, are trying to get that video back and get that video released, but there are two videos. Um, I personally have not, have, have not seen those two videos um, I just didn't get a chance before the show today, but I did get a chance to watch uh, the Minnesota shooting, and I will play a little bit of that because I think it's important to hear. Um, but we we continue to have an epidemic of police killing mainly black young men. That Every that, two days, someone between the ages of, uh, I think it's 18 and 43, dies mm-hmm. African-American male. African American male every two days shot by a police officer? Yeah. By a police officer. Yes. Okay, repeat that. Every two days, a African American male between the ages of 18 and 43 is killed by an officer of the law. That is stunning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely stunning. So, uh, we'll, we'll get to the Black Lives Matter stuff. Uh, in a little bit, because you know, if I, if you want to know, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, how the Nazis can systematically kill off the Jews, take a look at Fox News today. You know, you you get uh, take a look at your Uncle Frank's Facebook page. You know, it's on my Facebook page too. You post the video of a man being killed by a police officer, and someone immediately starts posting his criminal record. 
as if that means that he's a, a capital criminal, that he was right. to be put to death by the state. This whole thing jumped the shark with Eric Garner for me. Like mm-hmm. the minute the minute Eric Garner happened, like in the reaction to people to of people to that, yeah, immediately that, that was the that was the moment I was like, this is this is an issue where. This there is no middle ground on this. That this is mm-hmm. this is about you respect humanity or you don't. Yeah. Right. It isn't about race. It isn't about your bullshit politics. It isn't about your Fox News talking points. It isn't about the Al Sharptons of the world trying to run games. This is about a system that is killing people, mm-hmm. and you either murdering su- you murdering people, and you either support it or you don't. There you is may- no excuse for it. There is no, this guy was a bad apple. This guy was, Mm-mm. he had a criminal record. He was doing drugs. He resisted. None of that stuff is an argument. You either support the unnecessary, unjustified murder of an individual because of whatever trivial reason the cop can give you. You either support that or you don't. Yeah. There because is no, you're, not a, you're not kind of pregnant. You don't almost get raped. This is a, they either support this or you don't. Yep. So yesterday, July 6th, uh, a man named Ramsey Ortega started his four-year pr- prison sentence. He was the man that filmed the death of Eric Gardner. The days in prison that he will serve are the only days in prison that anyone from that incident will serve. Yeah. And it is on drug and gun charges. And you don't think that that was accelerated because he was videotaping the state? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? It, it it's out watching the people me. watching him right yeah and uh, he was you know they patted him down and they found guns they found you know and I had a libertarian argue with me saying well he didn't go to jail because he videotaped he went to jail because he had guns and drugs so I was like and yes yeah. how about yeah. we come over to your house dumbass yeah but he's just in New York if he would have been up in Vermont you have drugs you have some weed it's- so let's start with the Minnesota shooting. Give us, give us the facts of what happened there, Greg. All right. So the guy's name is uh, Philando Castile. He's 32, and he was shot. Uh, he was pulled over. Ended up being shot by the police officer. He was pulled over for a broken taillight, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what actually caused this to go viral and all over the Internet was, one, already what had happened um, in Baton Rouge. And then, two, his girlfriend got on Facebook, and Facebook lied to the thing. Mm-hmm. And then Facebook initially you know, flagged the video for graphic content and then allowed it to go back up. But... Mm-hmm. Um, the thing we don't know is we don't get video of the actual shooting. All we see is the aftermath. And so I actually got some of the dialogue in the, uh, from the girlfriend. And so pretty much the debate's going to go around what was said. And so she starts saying he let the officer know that he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet, and the officer just shot him in his arm. Let's actually play the audio okay. for people because I think that's more powerful. I think Way more. Uh, you, you listen to her tone of voice. I don't think it's set in for her initially what has happened. Because she's initially calm. Listen, once the officer starts talking, he's the faraway voice. Listen to his tone of voice, because I think it's telling to hear his state of mind. Stay with me. We got pulled over for a busted tail light in the back. And the police just, he's, he's, he's covered. He ain't killed my boyfriend. Four. He's licensed. He's carried. To, he's licensed to carry. He was trying to get out his ID and his wallet out his um pocket, and he let the officer know that he was re- he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet. Now uh, the groaning in the background is Castile. He is moving and writhing in pain, and uh, as she is narrating, the police officer is probably back at his car. He's not in the window. And at a certain point, very, very soon in the video, um, she's talking, you know, right into the camera in the background is the boyfriend in the passenger seat. And at a certain point, you just hear him stop making noise, stop moving. And it's very apparent that he's probably lost so much blood. I mean, his arm, he was clearly shot into his right arm, into his torso, around his chest and stomach area. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of blood on his white shirt on that portion of the shirt. Uh, and we continue with, with his, do you know what his girlfriend's name was? I do not. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and the officer just shot him in his arm. We're waiting for a back. I will, sir. No worries. I will. This is the officer. He just shot his arm off. We got the officer. Uh, I'm going to rewind it a little bit because the officer is the one that uses the profanity. 
officer just shot him in his arm. We're waiting for a back. I will, sir. No worries. I will. He just shot his arm off. We got pulled yeah. over on Larpener. I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hand off it. He have, you told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. Oh, my God. Please don't tell me he's dead. He stopped moving at this point. Please don't tell me my boyfriend just went like that. Keep your hands where they are, please. Yes, I will, sir. I'll keep my hands where they are. Please don't tell me this, Lord. Please, Jesus, don't tell me that he's gone. Please don't tell me that he's gone. Please, officer, don't tell me that you just did this to him. You shot four bullets into him, sir. He was just getting his license and registration, sir. Get the female passenger out. Other police officers start pulling up now. Exit now. They order her out of the car. Keep him up. Where's my daughter? You got my daughter? Face away from me and walk backwards. Her daughter was in the car during the shooting, by the way. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Now three keep officers walking. ordering her to keep walking. She keeps the camera Get rolling. Knees. Get on your knees. She's now put on her knees as though she's committed some criminal act. She's now cuffed as though she's committed a crime. Ma'am, you're just being detained right now until we get this all sorted out, okay? Now, in fairness to the police hey, officers, they, they normally would, in a situation like this, they would detain the girlfriend because, obviously, the police officer is the one that just shot her boyfriend. And in a domestic situation, for, for instance, you know, you go into a domestic violence situation, he's been beating the crap out of her, but the second you put your hands on him, she goes fight or flight on the cops. And so you, you have to detain both parties. So that is why she is detained, but it is of note that she is detained and put on the ground face down. Her camera is lying on the ground next to her. At one point, a cop picks it up, she says, and throws it. Uh, oh, Facebook. Please don't tell me, Lord Jesus, please don't tell me. Okay, please. No, please don't tell me not to break my hand. Here, take it off my hand. Please don't tell me he's gone. Please, Jesus, no. Please, no! Please, no! Don't let him be gone, Lord! Police officer. She's explaining at this point. Uh, then she realizes uh, this is Lavish Reynolds. And uh, she realizes that he's gone and she loses it again. And the daughter comes over to comfort her. The daughter sounds like she's somewhere in her, uh, somewhere between five and ten. Uh, obviously, a tragic situation. I mean, just to hear it, uh, let alone to see it. To watch a man uh, die, you know, and you want to hate the officer, but you hear in that video his state of mind was absolutely over the top, frantic. Uh, you know, he she is sitting there talking on Facebook, and he doesn't even recognize it. He's so gone mentally. And so overwhelmed in that moment that she's sitting there doing a Facebook broadcast and the police officer never even realizes it. Uh, you know, so, uh, so in this situation, she, um, you know, she is telling Facebook that he has, he had a gun, he had a permit to carry, he told the officer that, he reached for his Which is life. 100% what you're supposed to do when the officer walks up to the window. You're supposed yep. to say, officer, I have a permit to carry, and I have a gun in the vehicle. Right. That's the first thing supposed to be out of your mouth. He said license and registration. He went to pull for his license and registration, which were in the wallet, and that's when he was shot. Uh, and if you look at the, you know, just to do a little forensic work, because uh, I watched a lot, a lot of Law and Order here, and you see his, his arm is crooked, like it was leaning over to his side. Um, but obviously just a tragic situation, you know. It, it's... Not just for the family, but also, I mean, you, the, you hear the uh, the trauma in the officer's voice, too. Um, 
you know, so you have to wonder uh, what leads up to this sort of situation, and what is the psychology of an officer that when they when a when a young black male reaches into his to his pants to get his wallet, why is his first instinct to shoot? You know, and they're right. trained. They're yeah. trained this way. Mm-hmm. It's training. But that's still no freaking excuse. <laughs> right. That's no excuse. It's you know how many it's how many times excuse. I see that at gun stores where I've watched someone come in like, hey, I need a holster for this new gun, and they pull it out of their waistband, hit, sweep everyone with their freaking barrel, and drop it on the counter, and I've never once seen that person just no, I, mow I, down. I, it is not an excuse. I'm saying that this is, they the are trained to react yes, this way. Yeah, sorry, yeah. This, but, is, this is like... They are trained to treat every single possible instance of... It's life and death. Yeah. Like, that's just how they are trained. That's why they kill mm-hmm. dogs. That's why they open a door and they see a little freaking chihuahua and they shoot in the face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's because they are trained to act that way. And it goes into... It's not... That's why it's not a problem of a few bad apples. It's a systemic problem. Yep. Because they are trained to react this way to these kinds of situations. And... If I can go to a gun, st- gun store mm-hmm. and I can get a normal gun safety class and I can, you know, know how to handle a weapon and mm-hmm. I can deal with all of these people, mm-hmm. you know, I can I can live in a world where these people around me have these vi- these deadly weapons and I know not to react in such a way to think that my life is in danger every single step of the way. It's because like I have I have appropriate training to this. Cops are in this situation where they think that like everybody's out to kill them right. and all this kind of stuff. And that comes, you know, there's plenty of reasons why we But you know, we the, he yeah. has the state permit that says he knows what he's doing. The license to kill. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, no, I mean, I'm saying I'm saying that absolutely what it is. I, I'm mm-hmm. saying that that the the man that was killed had the license, the state matter. license. You know, yeah, the, sh- the the cops are they they literally like this like the training is such that they are. Like, look at it, like, like, think about it. It's, it's the old argument. Whenever you have, whenever you have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. If you have this training to react in such a way that anybody who even looks at you crossways is probably trying to shoot you. And you have SWAT teams that have literally, literally tanks, like, yes. just on the street. For the military. Like, these, like, hmm. you're not, when you are, when you, and this is what goes into the Radley Balco angle. Like, yeah. when you have a warrior cop when you when your cops are literally soldiers on the streets Mm -hmm. roman occupiers they are going to look at situations as a soldier would look at them because that's how they're trained to look at them yeah and And what's that say about us that we train our into the individuals who are a civilian protection force in order to you know protect the individuals within the society and then also keep the maintain the public order. It says that we're scared as hell yep. of everything. Everything yep. scares us. Everything's worst case scenario. Everything. Everyone is thinks mm-hmm. that ISIS. Everything. Every, yeah, everyone yada. thinks right. it's still 1991 mm-hmm. and that the, we are the most violent year. Like it, overall, violence is going down. It's oh, incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the lowest it's ever been in the history of mankind. Yes. And yeah. I mean, those are statistics that you can't argue with. And the the problem is is that like. With, when it comes to this, is we have a problem of of training on the part of police officers where they must react to every situation as if it is the last time they'll ever be on the street. Sure. And then there is the reaction to their overreaction is, well, we can't treat them as if they've committed anything wrong. So they have a double standard of the law. Yeah. Which just perpetuates, just, it's a cycle. It perpetuates the other. It, it compounds and mm-hmm. grows and grows and grows until you create this mindset. We have a, a two-hour lecture that Radley Balco gave at IU uh, to our friend Suzanne Schaefer that we recorded, and we'll uh, post that in the show notes. So if you go to wearelibertarians.com. The book's The Rise of the Warrior Cop. Yeah, he wrote a book about it, and he gives a lot of facts in there. You know, and he he just says, it's like, the expectation has now become that it doesn't matter who the cop kills as long as he comes back to the precinct at the end of the day. Yep. His life is more valuable than the lives of anybody, you know. In this situation, he just started shooting. In in the I just watched the the Sterling He reacted. Video. I mean, it was yeah. I don't even think he had a conscious thought or a process. It was a it was a conditioned response it to was, a stimulus. Mm-hmm. It was fight or yeah. flight. Mm-hmm. Uh and <clears throat> You know, as as white guys, and that's why we asked Harry to be here because Harry is a black guy. <laughs> you hey, know? Guys. hey, uh, he is our our uh, chief black correspondent. That might be racist. 
Yeah, just he just, call, he just uh, indirectly called you token. I know, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, but I think it's important that we have on somebody who has experience as a black man. I just have that one weekend in Tulsa that that I can in go Tulsa, <laughs> right? But a yeah, rhinestone we, cowboy. Yeah, but, was, that one weekend in Tulsa. What did you do? You and Nick ride? Taylor got weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't have experience as a black man, and I don't have experience of what it's like to interact society as a black man. You know. Harry, Harry today walked into a Panera Bread, and what was their special, Harry? Uh, just started their new watermelon salad. <laughs> and you know yep. that when Harry walked in, and they have to pitch the watermelon salad, oh, the watermelon, the watermelon, watermelon salad, <laughs> the kid behind the register saw Harry walk in and didn't think about Harry like he'd think about me. Mm-hmm. What, hap- what happened when they offered you the watermelon salad, Harry? When I first walked up, there's two um, white people up there ready to, like... Um, we call assist- them crackers. Yeah, to assist <laughs> me at Panera. And, you- and once the guy said, like, would you like to try the new watermelon salad, the other girl that was standing next to him just turned around and just started walking back to the kitchen. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And nope. I just... Yeah. Racism nope. insurance. <laughs> Please come here right, right now. now. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and I just stood there and said, yeah, I would like a watermelon salad. I'll take a full one, actually. I love watermelon. <laughs> oh. I mean, when you got here, Harry, Creighton mm-hmm. wouldn't even talk to you. I know, yeah. You guys yeah. are... <laughs> <laughs> I Providing to accurate commentary on your inherent <laughs> no, racism. Well, you wouldn't know because you weren't freaking here. I, I, looked, I pulled up. Yeah. Harry's in his car doing something. Creighton's like, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Look down at the ground. Look down at the ground. Sit on the tailgate. Listen, I'm just saying... I Harry is taking this the right way. He's paranoid as fuck. He was he was videotaping me in the parking lot as I pulled in. Well, he's he, got his camera rolling at all times. He also yeah. suggested breaking into your place. Yeah. <laughs> well. I also recommend if you are going to video, videotape the police, use something that's streaming. Don't have something that will store onto yeah. the device because stuff will happen. So like bamboo bamboozer or using like Facebook Live or Periscope, so it will go out to the cloud away from you. Use your data. Use your data connection for that. Are you trying Get to say agents of the law might improperly dispose of evidence that could condemn them? Yeah. Have and will. Luckily, I mean, lo- a lot of kill people. Yeah, they do shoot people. But luckily, a lot of them don't are really bad at the data deletion. They're really bad at it, so it, a lot of it can be recovered. Um, a lot of a lot of law enforcement agencies now, and there was a law that was passed here in Indiana, and I think it might have actually not passed. I think it might have gotten defeated, uh, where they wanted to. Uh, allow warrantless you you get pulled over yeah the cop can walk up put your phone into a cradle and download yeah. all of the contents of your phone never seeing a judge and uh mm-hmm. and it was dangerously close to passing i don't know if it passed or not here in indiana but it, it may have been passed in your state yeah but like even some of them will still use it like as a test so they just bring it out and just like freaking use it that's why, like, um, you've got, like, people who, like, people who love Android phones. I like my Android phone, too. But if you root this thing, you get inside its root, you've got to make sure you put all the protections back on the device and make sure you encrypt it because once that thing, so when you're using the um, USB port, the micro USB port inside of here, once that gets hooked up to the computer, you've got to make sure it's got to be trusted inside. And right. if it's got to be trusted inside, you have to pass your encryption. And if it breaks your encryption, make sure, like, they can't break it. Don't use your, don't use biometric. Biometric is, is not going to help you because they can take your hand and put your hand right on it and break that. Don't use a key pattern because most people use a basic key pattern. Don't use a pin because most people only really use, like, ten different pin numbers. For this one, it's four numbers. Use a passcode. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it sucks. Is these things inherently secure? Yeah, but if you want to keep people out of it, it's what you got to do. It's better than having your shit memes all over the internet. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I protect... God knows what, what the internet would see if Craig's phone got commandeered by the cops. I have some killer ass shots on here, I'm just saying. It would perfectly coincide with there the... There uh, me, but, you know. Nothing, nothing but poorly photoshopped meme that never made the wall chat. Yeah. <laughs> no one has more selfies of their nipple than Chris Spangler. I can verify that. <laughs> Listen, I am free the nipple. Free the nipple. Uh-huh. I am nipple lives matter. Tits on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if if our friend Mel is going to post uh, pictures of her friend's chests, I'm going to post pictures of my chest in there. Mm-hmm. So equality, because that totally yep. makes sense. Guy well, chest, yeah. guy chest. We don't get we don't get girl chest. We get guy chest. So yeah. could you please stop eating Domino's pizza while we're here? 
Do you have any more left over there? Because I want no. one. Nope. You ate the whole pizza? In, in the first 20 minutes of the podcast. I was hungry. Those 27 inch pythons need fuel. This Literally, in 20 minutes, he ate a large pizza. It's a medium pizza. It's a large Either pizza. Either way, you're fat and selfish. It's a large pizza. <laughs> like, like me. I need calories, but, Joe. Hey, before the show, uh, uh, Spangle did smash like two cantaloupes. Two whole <laughs> cantaloupes. I, I smashed a whole cantaloupe. It was two halves. Two whole cantaloupes. He had a whole cantaloupe, and he, he was late because he was uh, being overly selective with meat at Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was late. He was looking for that vegan meat. That's true. I mm-hmm. was running behind because I had to go do a help a Hooters girl with her Facebook page. Oh my God. <laughs> and then the I had meat. to go to Taco Bell. Your giving knows no bounds. <laughs> and then I, uh, I'm a very giving and thorough. I'm generous and thorough. Okay. Yeah. When a Hooters girl says I need help with my Facebook, and here I am, white knight. Uh, yep. <laughs> I am a professional. Uh, then I had to go and smash a couple bean burritos, and while I was driving uh, home, I was like, you know what? I got 15 minutes to get there. I better go in and check if they have meat specials at Kroger. The Hispanics love Chris Spangle. He eats their burritos. <laughs> <laughs> love bean burritos. I go and I get two uh, two bean burritos and a cheesy gordita crunch. Hashtag I love Hispanics. <laughs> <laughs> Tear yeah. down that wall. So Harry, uh, you're black. Yes. Um, so, mm-hmm. And. Uh, I mean, and, you, and, and, funny. and I carry guns. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and he likes watermelon salad. <laughs> so when you uh, <laughs> don't tempt me, it's like shave and a haircut, fried chicken. <laughs> like, I'm like, and then you mention, then you mention watermelon, and I was like, don't say fried. <laughs> we need to change chicken. the about section of our podcast what too. Is that? He's just trying to outrage. It's okay. We have a uh, black friend. Roger hey, I'll let him repeat what he said a minute ago. <laughs> he did. He had a watermelon salad. It's okay. We can we, all. It's okay. We are going to die. It's by bagels. Jordan's fish and chicken. I, I will not be. Uh, they do have some fire chicken though. I will not be sending this podcast to Mark Lamont Hill. Yeah. Uh, so Harry, as as a black man, mm-hmm. so it, that's not funny. That's a factual statement. As a black man, uh, have you been pulled over driving while black? Yes. What are some of the instances? I imagine they're multiple. Um, I used to work up in this place of uh, called Carmel. I used to get pulled over quite frequently driving into Carmel, especially when I leave at night or I come in the day. The only car I never got pulled over in going into Carmel or Carmel into was my Toyota pickup truck. Mm-hmm. The, the huge redneck edition pickup trucks had the lift kit. Like the ones kit. ISIS has? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I had the massive lift kit on it. It was black. I had rust it on Jason it. Had the big, one. massive bumper yeah. on it, you know. And I would blare country out of it, and I would, like, ride ghosts. I would sit back in there so you really couldn't see me, so all you heard was country music. All you saw was the never mind. The country music, the Dale uh, um, the Dale Earnhardt Jr. The junior <laughs> license plate, a uh, vanity plate up front, and my license plate on the back window, and the, and the tow hitch, the big tow hitch in the back. You were like Charlie Pride or Cowboy <laughs> Troy before it was cool. <laughs> It was also the extra long bed edition, so I could put an eight foot uh, uh, um, six grills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> six of my grills in the back of it. True story. I was in high school and I was driving through Carmel with my cousin who lived in Carmel, mm-hmm. and uh, we saw a car pulled over. And uh, like we, so before that we saw that we were driving, and I was he was like just talking about how racist the police were there. And he said, yeah, oh yeah. "He said if you see one cop car, you know it's a white person. If you see two cop cars, you know it's a black person. Mm-hmm. We go over the hill. There's three cop cars, and it was a Hispanic. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, Carmel well, has a well. There were I used people to, in the car. Yeah, I was. You know, I used to work in catering, Stop. and I, it was used to be like most of the uh, Mexicans and Hondurans who would come up there and work. It's okay. You're like, hey, they got late. Why they're late? They've probably been pulled over by by Carmel PD on the way up here. Yeah, I was pulled over by three hundred ZX. I was pulled over by Neon. I, you know, pulled over in every vehicle. A Dodge Neon. Yeah, Dodge Neon. What? Well, the most do- winning is Dodge chassis in racing history. Stay on, you can't fit any grill focus. On that. Oh, sorry, but even like even like a um, my wife Lacey who got pulled over going up into Carmel. A she white got, woman. A white woman got pulled over. Of course, she was driving a like a. 09 focus with all tinted windows coming up into Carmel like at 2 a.m. Did I have an eyebrow that said focus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Driving while windows black. Right, yeah. Well, they pulled her over. Like, her her stop was like, like amazed me because that made no sense how that went down. Like, she had this nice, calm, easy, like, stop. <laughs> And then it was like afterwards, the cop like kind of like in passing, hey, you got any weapons in the car? Yeah, it's been in the glove box the entire time I've been talking to you. So the cop was like, all right, well, you know, like, 
uh, like uh, uh, brings her out of the car, didn't even handcuff her, sets her down, pulls the gun out, unloads it. Would you like a lemonade? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, ma'am. But I am so to... not threatened by you. Would you like me to have a pizza delivered? Yeah, he, he goes to like the most of the whole stop and then freaking ask about it. And she finally just offers it. Oh, yeah, it's been here the entire time. Is that the first question you get asked? Oh, you, you, usually, yeah, yeah, usually, really. yeah. Um, um, you, but I have so many weapons in the car. I usually tell, the, look the cop in the face, like you really don't want to ask me that question. <laughs> well, that, I'm sure that helps, right? Oh yeah, because it's funny to me because it's like, yeah, I've got nunchucks, I've got some size, I've got bow staff. <laughs> Freaking Harry's like, you see that so, red dot on your chest? Don't ask me that question because I will go full LARP. On <laughs> <laughs> I have a LARPing sword. <laughs> Let me ask you this: Have you ever pulled over somebody that's been to Pork Fest? <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I have weapons only pineapple can dream of. <laughs> so, and then what they constitute is an armament because technically I have encryption devices, which are regulated as armaments, but, you know, that's besides the point, but, like, I have been... Po- <laughs> I'm a weapon of mass destruction, but anyway, so... <laughs> this is totally the kind of thing that Harry would say. I know. <laughs> well, have you heard of Raspberry Pi? <laughs> it's basically a tactical nuke I carry in my pocket. <laughs> Listen, I will have you know I killed three servers with my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> There was one time I did get pulled over by the uh, uh, police with my gun. I had my Glock on my hip. Um, I'm out. I'm going to my friend's house. I'm in my um, um, my rotary, and I and I get on the highway. I'm going like I'm flying, and I get passed by this Dodge Charger doing about like. 80, right? And it's like going. I'm right behind you. Like we're whipping and we're going in between traffic. Like we're, I've went from the Lawrence all the way over to what was like past Meridian Street. We were flying through this construction zone and then all of a sudden, right, I'm just sticking with him the entire time. He slams on his brakes. I doffed in the election because he just slams on his brakes. I thought he was brake checking me and then boom, the lights turned on. It's a cop. I was like, oh shit. So I pull over to the side of the road. Uh, of course, you know, start recording on my cell phone. Put it on the dash, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I get re- and I get ready to wait, wait on the left hand side, wait for the cop to come up to me. Doesn't come to the left hand side, comes to the right hand side. Of course, I am black, so the first thing I do when I get pulled over is I turn on all the lights inside the car, every unnecessary light, hmm. radios off. Why is all- that? Be- so they can see inside, so they can see my black ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's l- 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 like. They can't say, oh, well, I thought there was a shadow of a gun. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. makes total sense to yeah. me. Yeah, so I've got like... <laughs> you just stripping buck naked and laying like the Vesuvian like, man get to make of- sure that they're not threatened whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a team. <laughs> I have a concealed <laughs> permit. <laughs> <laughs> and when the cop comes on the right hand side, I was like, "Come on, window! If you like, you roll down, please roll down." <laughs> you know, because like, that'd be the time the window doesn't roll down. I've got to tell him, "Hey, that doesn't work." <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. So I roll it down, and we're talking. You know, and, you know, we'll go through the story, like you know, because he knows I've been following him since Lawrence. He's got to know I've been following him. So like. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do because, like, he's got me dead to rise for speeding from his, you know, freaking road pirate. And then he asked for my... Uh, <laughs> did you call him that? They're all road you know, yeah, I almost did, but he... Uh, we're talking, and then he wants, like, license, and, you know, he wants my license. And it's like, uh, I hand him my registration, and he goes, like, well, where's your license? It's like, uh, I don't want to give you my license right now because I have my gun and my hip, my permits in the back, my back, my, in my right butt cheek pocket with my license and the gun permits right there. I was like, all right, well, just give that to me. The gun is also on my right hand side <laughs> and I don't want to get, I don't want to put my hand on it. Well, just don't go for the gun. Do you not understand? It's on my right hip. My right butt cheek has my, is where my wallet's at. I don't want to go over there. Mm-hmm. You'll be fine. Just, just don't go for the gun. How could I not go? It's in the same area, right. you know? and I'm freaking out, like because like this is how I'm going to go. This is how I'm freaking going right. to die. I'm going to get shot here on the side so of the it's, road. So it's, I mean, it's just a legitimate fear for you. Yeah. Even coming over here today, when I got my gun in my pocket, I said to myself, like, man, do I even want to carry this thing right now? I love my gun. I want to be like personal protection, but like, no, having this thing on it that's supposed to protect me is going to get me shot. Which from is my, such a from, commentary from that something for, something for self protection in our society mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm is considered a threat against the force responsible for protecting you. The state. Right. They're, yeah. They're, Look at that. And isn't the irony in that absolutely incredible? It, but yeah. It's not an irony, because the entire history of this country, from the second black men hit this continent, mm-hmm. 
the state has been trying to kill black men and has systematically has institutionalized racism and we've been chipping away at that racism and it's not like this is a new phenomenon it's the, and it's and it's, yeah. clear, it's it's important to make the point it's the state that has primarily been the re- the, the person who's doing this and yep. it's not like and it is a state that we as voters have voted in and it's not it's not that's not to say that you know average private people haven't had a role to play in like racism in american history but you do have to recognize that there is there is something to be said about the fact that Jim Crow laws were laws, right? Yes. And that slavery was a legal system. Mm-hmm. Like yep. these things were state sanctioned. What is the anatomy of the state? The state, a government, a federal, a local, a state government is force. It's the will of the people. You have turned into force. Force. You have well, zero. You it is. you will either be bankrupt or robbed of your freedom through monetarily or through jail. If you do death. not comply. No, it's death. Yeah. Everything is death. If you don't have money to buy food with, you're dead. Yeah. If you don't have the ability to do business, you're dead. Yeah. Everything is backed up by you're dead. You do what we say or you're dead. If you produce It's that simple. If you if say you're a subsistence farmer and you would just wanted to be an isolationist and do yep. it on your own property, you still would have to have money to pay your property taxes because yeah. you're mm-hmm. leasing it from the government. And two you would also have to make sure they didn't consider the production of your crop and the lack of your access or um, uh, oh, participation uh, in the economy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the, de- the depression law that you were adversely affecting crop prices by not yeah. participating in like, creating demand. Like, yeah. like, there's no escaping. There, there, you, you, there, we don't own property in this country. Like, you don't have ownership of property. <laughs> you have permission to use property yep. like we can say on paper that you own property because oh this is my land it's on the deed but when the push comes to shove stop paying your property yeah taxes. if you don't pay your property tax they're gonna come and take your house like and then they're gonna put it up for auction yeah they're gonna yep. put it up for auction and, and so, a sheriff an agent of the state is gonna come with a gun and force you out yeah. on but the see street. those yeah. are white people problems we're talking about no, our, a, our friend no, Harry. No, d- it's, 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 it's black people's yeah. problems, too. The foreclosure crisis. Yeah, yeah. the foreclosure oh, crisis. Hurt black black people. People. What, I'm, what yeah. I'm trying to say they, is they the danger is more immediate. They might take you out of their house, but they're not going to shoot you first and then Degrees. drag you out. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, but if you don't have your house, you don't have somewhere to live, you don't have shelter, you're going to die. So and, they, it's and, death. Back up by death again. Well, I absolutely agree, and I think statistics prove this, as does... Just personal experience watching the news. I prefer anecdotes. Yeah. Well, th- there is an epidemic of of black uh, of African Americans being treated unilaterally more unfairly by the justice system. Oh my than God! People. Like the sentencing is, is three to one more severe. There is absolutely no argument with that. That is one hundred percent true. Um, but I think it is important to recognize, and I don't want people to think that I'm trying to just trying to change the point, but like. The the nature of this problem when it comes to police violence is so much deeper than just black and white. It really yeah. is because the, a, a great a- example is this happened. I don't remember how long ago it was, but I remember I read about it when the Eric Garner thing happened. There was a kid in Wisconsin a few years back, a couple ten years ago. I don't remember exactly what mm-hmm. it was. Uh, this kid is you know he's a kid and yep. uh, white kid, and mm-hmm. his dad was a retired Air Force veteran. And this kid got shot in underneath a street lamp in front of his mom, in front of his sister, got killed by this cop while he was handcuffed, standing by this by his vehicle, and that cop is still on the force. Mm-hmm. And that stuff happens to white people, too. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean that it's not a problem that it happens to black people more than it happens to white people. But it's it is, it is yeah. a universal problem of the state versus the people. Mm-hmm. Now, the fact that they go after black people more than they go after white people is a problem in and of itself. But it's not changed the fact that there is a epidemic of double standard to, that is lethal, a lethal double standard, mm-hmm. where cops can literally kill you without cause. Yeah. And the, they don't even yeah. get indicted the in only, the name right. of keeping the public yeah. order. The, yeah. the right. only person that went to jail was the guy that videotaped the cops killing Eric right. Gardner. The right. cops didn't go to jail. The Baltimore police didn't poli- get indicted. They yeah. didn't no. even have a trial. By a right. system that has been said they can indict a ham sandwich if they want to. Yeah. It is yeah. 100% protection. It is so much the state protecting their own. And it's people like normal Americans. They, they, they... They just they forgive it. They they endorse it because it's it's they have to. It's almost like 
like people like like me, I think people like younger people, like we we see it from a different view. But like like older folks, like our our parents, our grandparents, they must still think it's nineteen like ninety, yeah, or like it's it's Nixon. And that, like, there's still, like, doped up riots in L.A. The, yeah, the silent yeah. majority. Yeah. Like, like, this, I mean, they must think that this is what it is. Because they look at it as, like, you know, it, he shouldn't have been breaking the law. Sure. Like, he shouldn't yeah. have been doing that. He's just, like, Snowden's like, a traitor. Like, 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 mm-hmm. like, you are, like, this holier-than-thou attitude. Like, I haven't done anything wrong. I don't see a problem. Therefore, there is no problem. And everyone else is just the one that's in the...